Hey folks, Doc here. Uh, shop's kind of full at the moment. Um, as you can see, I've got the uh, Bannerman chassis kind of laid out there. I've got the engine sort of half-assed sitting on there with a bungee cord because I was fooling around with spacing and placement and stuff like that. And uh, over here on the workbench, um, I've got a couple of Peerless 700, three of them in fact. Um, where's the third one? It's hiding there somewhere. One, two, three. Yeah, there it is. And uh, I'm going to be doing a little uh, little video on the 700s, a little informative thing for you in the next couple of days. Um, I actually shot some footage to that end once already, um, but it didn't work out very well. The audio sucked, uh, so we're just uh, we're going to redo it. Now, the reason I've called this meeting is to show you what I am doing right now. What I am doing right now is I'm fixing to start stripping that thing down. And that thing, which looks prettier than it is, and I'll explain that in a minute, is a 99 or 2000, can never remember which, Yamaha Wolverine 350 4x4. Let's just do ourselves a little zoom in there. There you have it, folks. 4x4. It's got nothing to do with the front differential. It's the sticker. You put a 4x4 sticker on anything, it's a 4x4. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So this Wolverine um, is uh, 350 cc, single cylinder, liquid cooled, four wheel drive, um, and I think it's a five speed. Either way, it's a manual transmission. Um, and this was actually a fire recovery. Um, this thing got its ass end burnt off in a blaze and I recovered it and I was fixing to restore it. Um, the ATV that I had up until recently and traded off um, was an automatic and that kind of drives me nuts. I didn't like it much. So when I had the opportunity to score this and uh, you know potentially restore it, I thought that's fantastic. Um, these things were a really cool hybrid between a utility machine and a sport machine. And uh, between the uh, between the 350, its size and weight, and the manual transmission, I thought, you know, that's going to be a fantastic little toy to play with. Um, and I was going to restore it, um, and then kind of change my mind. Let's have a closer look. Okay, so here's what's going on that you couldn't see. The back of the bike burnt in a fire. The seat, uh, plastics, fenders... Um, Front plastic just got a little scorched there, but it pretty much lived. Um, the wiring, the CDI, the regulator rectifier, um, brake lines back there. Uh, pretty much, pretty much all the wiring hoses and tubes in the back got roasted. Um, the back tires got completely cooked. Um, the rims got blackened and scorched, but they didn't melt. So I think they're savable, but I've lost the nice chrome, which is a bit of a bit of a bummer. The backs were the same as these fronts. Let me just bring the camera around. And uh, I really like them. It's, uh, it's unfortunate that they got discolored. I guess I'll be painting them. I'd like to reuse them. Um, on the front here, uh, we've got ITP mud lights at 26 by 10 by 12. The rears were 26, 12, 12, but like I said, they, uh, they burnt. So on the back here, <clears throat> I just basically scabbed on some four bolt trailer wheels and tires just to be able to roll this thing around while I was messing with it. Um, the fire did not damage the differential internally. It didn't hurt any of the seals or anything like that. I got lucky there. Um, the brake caliper has been removed. I was checking it out and it seems like it survived. Um, the engine was a fairly fresh rebuild. Um, the pull starts intact, the carburetors intact. Um, I saved that. I pulled them off when I was checking it out. Um, you can see that there's some corrosion on top of the engine. And uh, that there, I guess, was uh, partly a result of it sitting outside, you know, having been roasted. The engine's got good compression. It rolls over. The starter works and all that stuff. But like I said, the, uh, the wiring took a hit. Um, <clears throat> one of the really neat things about this is that it's got the aftermarket worn front axle disconnect. And I don't know if the camera's going to sufficiently focus on that. 
but it basically consists of a little control mechanism that allows you to engage and disengage the front drive. This thing had originally from the factory been full-time 4x4 and that little aftermarket kit um, basically made it so you can put it in two-wheel drive and throw it around and have a good time doing it. And I thought that was a really neat feature and worth saving. Basically I had a look around and uh, you know I tried to get my hands on the CDI and the regulator rectifier and all the other electronics I needed and hoses and plastics and this set and everything else and uh, you know I just don't know if these things are incredibly sought after or if people just have this unrealistic expectation as to what they want for parts but I was having a hard time finding parts and what parts I did find were stupid expensive so having had a look around and assessed the number of projects and type of projects that I had I decided screw it instead of this thing sitting around for absolutely bloody ever and you know possibly not getting done until you know 10 years later when I maybe find a parts machine for a good price or uh, it can give its life for a greater good which is exactly the front end is going to come out of this thing the differential the axle shafts the suspension the brakes all of that um, is going to end up on the front end of mule 3 um, I believe I indicated that on a prior video as a matter of fact so I've taken some preliminary measurements and uh, it's, it's definitely going to take some doing uh, it's not going to be an easy task I don't want to just very simply cut the front end off the bike and weld it onto the tractor that's pretty hack and I'm not too interested in doing that um, what I'm going to wind up doing is removing the suspension pivots like loosely I'm going to cut it off the frame and then take a pile of measurements and I'm going to wind up just basically redoing everything, uh, redoing the front end of the tractor to be able to accept the suspension pivots and uh, go from there. Now, in the greater scheme of things, that differential certainly isn't as stout as the rear end on this machine. Um, so the front axle is going to be kind of, uh, kind of a weaker component compared to everything else. But I think it'll be okay. Um, in the long run it's going to be the ass end of this thing that's going to see the worst of the abuse I think so um, over the next few days I'm going to set about stripping this thing down and see what I have to work with
Okay, now I can start taking some preliminary measurements to try and figure out what I got to do to make this happen on Mule 3's frame. This will be interesting, if nothing else. Well, folks, that about puts the wraps on stripping down the ATV chassis there. Um, I'll certainly keep you posted as the project continues and I continue collecting parts and sourcing bits and pieces and getting the chassis together and indeed as the build progresses. So, once again, thanks for tuning in, watching, subscribing, sharing. You just watched me strip. I feel dirty. Yeah.